So both both might still work. Right? All right. Uh, well, welcome everyone. So. Uh, It doesn't work. Wait, come back. <laughs> well, can you try now? Ah, okay. It's, it's emergency exit for this kind of emergency. <laughs> okay, well, uh, welcome. And uh, I'd like to just thank our co organizers. Uh, Sim Elam Pranava Zainabu. So, what is neurosymbolic AI? Um, first natural question. Not a sort of clean answer because uh, there are lots of different perspectives. I think I'll just leave that they say very general kind of uh, intuition, which is at least coming from the perspective of uh, today's dominant models, LLMs, um, somehow add the powers of knowledge and reasoning to the key properties in their various ways. People uh, are proposing on that, toward that. Why? Uh, here are some of the main reasons, and more or less these are, you could say, uh, all of the main, uh, most of the main uh, critiques or uh, weaknesses people have pointed out. Explainability, reasoning, which personally I tie to first the ability to do difficult problems, but in particular out of distribution generalization or generalizing to situations where uh, you haven't directly observed uh, something similar in training. Um, potentially learning with less, there's a big problem with uh, the amount of data, the amount of compute, is related to uh, the issue of uh, oligopolies or um, and uh, the reverse of that would like some democratization and the ability to create state-of-the-art models. Um, how? Well, <clears throat> possibly by uh, adding knowledge uh, as opposed to doing everything um, like a bacteria from scratch. So, and then um, hallucination, of course, which arguably uh, somehow we need some kind of tied of facts or a world model or semantics of some kind. And uh, controllability, uh, which is about specifying complex constraints, goals, ethics. Okay, so many things to say about all of those things, which our speakers will uh, touch upon. More or less, these could be uh, captured as you know some of the key elements of safe AI or reliable AI. Okay, so um, now, of course, the natural question is how? We'll see a bunch of perspectives. Um, if you want to see more on this and, and who does neurosymbolic, um, we've been running a, a uh, set of large meetings. This can be seen as uh, our, our winter edition. Um, if you can see our past ones, we do a, a winter one in summer school. Summer school. We have a summer school coming up um, this summer. Hey, uh, and uh, we tend to have a uh, large and uh, growing audience. So this appears to be a, uh, of a lot of interest. So <clears throat> even Gartner, you may be surprised to know, has uh, which has become increasingly, uh, let's say, uh, technical in, in my view. Um, uh, it was observed, uh, they place neurosymbolic AI all the way at the left of their their uh, uh, signature hype curve. Um, LLMs at the very top. Of course, if you're at the very top of the hype curve, there's nowhere to go but down. <laughs> so they place neurosymbolic AI as 10 years out, interestingly, for, uh, before getting to the bottom. Now, of course, a lot of it, uh, you know, it's not just a sample of fingers, there's some deep issues uh, that are long-standing, knowledge representation and acquisition. We put out a very nice uh, retrospective on Doug Lennon's work, which is still, um, as pointed out, a very key issue. Uh, 
Uh, I'll need to thank Doug for his pioneering work there. Um, systems that can scale up, that still lucid right now in neurosymbolic approaches. Um, evaluation and benchmarks. We have a whole bunch, arguably, that are they're scattered. Um, they may not be perfect, so that's something we should discuss. Um, and then, of course, the real kind of market success, arguably, is finally practical or commercial success. And um, one of the key challenges that I've been concerned about is that's holding back a lot of progress on the team is just how thick all of the components are if you're not working in that uh, component. Three main components to me being neural nets, probabilistic models, and then uh, uh, KRR. KRR. So it's just very hard to get into any of those three from the other. So, um, so this is part of uh, why we've been doing this in the schools. Now, uh, I'll just uh, sort of mention we toward this end, I'm starting this uh, nonprofit research institute. You can ask me about it uh, later if you want. And it's because of these deep issues, which I think are multi year issues, which are, you know, not exactly the kind of thing that uh, big companies have the patience for. <laughs> All right, um, we have a great set of invited speakers. Just remind you that this is uh, a day and a half, so we have tomorrow as well. And tomorrow in particular, we'll focus on the practical applications and successes. And we'll have, uh, as an opener, one of the godfathers of Neurosmog AI. And just to mention that uh, this has now got the interest, and this is a key, uh, moment, I think, where both DARPA and NSF noticed, if you look at the uh, calls for proposals, are interested in neuroscience AI. All right, and don't forget the lively panel we'll have uh, at the end of today's session, uh, where we'll discuss some open issues. All right, let me pass it to the scene. So, Thank you, Alex. So as you know, so this would never have been possible without the reviewers who voluntarily, we got like many more reviewers. So we had less papers and more reviewers somehow. So we got three reviews for each paper. And I usually call them superheroes of the workshop or any conference. So they are the people that these to be recognized. And the reviews were very good quality also. So I noticed like they really went into the depth and they gave very good feedback. So this is a, so we were very confused whether to make it one day workshop or two days. So then we decided let's make it 1.5. Okay, so we have fully packed agenda for two days. We have like sex invited talks we have 15 uh, contributor talks, we have a poster session, and we have a very interesting panel at the end of day one, which is today. Uh, unfortunately, some of the contributed uh, talk speakers, they were not able to come here in person. What we'll do is we'll make their recordings available on the website, on the even like this workshop uh, page. So you can go there and you can see them, you can reach out to them. Um, they really wanted to come here, but there were some issues like in the travel uh, visa and stuff. So, so unfortunately, we'll not be able to play their videos today. So some statistics here. So this is the first workshop of the series. Uh, uh, we did many neurosymbolic AI events before also, but uh, in the as a workshop, in context of large language models, the connection with large language models. This is the first, first workshop of the series. Uh, in future, we plan to make this like a uh, yearly event. So you will see in some, uh, some big conference, you'll see this workshop continue. Um, the invited speakers in this um, workshop will have 30 minutes. They can choose how much time to spend on QAs. The contributed talks will have five minutes 
uh, we made it short so that it's a lightning talk and then we have a long like discussion we can have longer discussion with poster poster session we got like 20 submissions out of which uh, we selected 15 and i believe like with the importance of like people understanding the importance of knowledge and reasoning we'll see many more submissions in the consecutive events that we'll do in the future And how you can stay in touch with us. So just scan this QR code, fill a simple form, and we'll add you to the mailing list. So you'll hear about all the future events. You can also reach out to me, you, other organizers, connect with them through social media, and we'll make sure that you never miss any news in the future. With that, I'll ask Pranava to introduce our first speaker. And one one more thing, sorry. Uh, one more thing. So please scan this QR code and we have some t-shirts and some pens and stickers in the end, like last last seat. There are very limited sizes available, but please take it for you, for your family. These are very nice IBM t-shirts, vests, and other products. 